You're listening to the American edition of The Voice of Russia, and I'm Justin Mitchell. Bob Dylan is one of the most revered figures in popular music. Beyond that, he has been known as a fighter for civil rights through his participation in marches in the early 60s and writing and performing such anti-racist songs as The Lonesome Death of Hattie Carroll and Hurricane. But now, some comments Dylan made to Rolling Stone magazine last year have led to criminal charges in France of inciting racist hatred against Croatians. Dylan was discussing how difficult it is to shake racial animus when he told Rolling Stone, quote, If you got a slave master or clan in your blood, blacks can sense that. Just like Jews can sense Nazi blood, and the Serbs can sense Croatian blood. It's that last part that has gotten Dylan in trouble. The Council of Croats in France have brought charges of inciting hatred against Mr. Dylan. To get a Serbian perspective, we are now joined by Danielle Sremots. She is an author, an expert on U.S. foreign policy in the Balkans, a multimedia consultant, and the president of the Serbian Institute. Danielle Sremots, thanks so much for joining us today on The Voice of Russia. Thank you very much. My pleasure. All right. So as a, as a Serbian-American, can I first get your reaction just to Bob Dylan's comments on the, on the face of them themselves? Well, um, I think that to Serbian-Americans, uh, perhaps on the one hand, the comments at least recognize something that um, is not generally known in the United States or emphasized, which is that uh, Serbs had lost so many lives in World War II, uh, Serbians who were fighting on behalf of you know the Allies, um, and they lost their lives due to uh, the Croatian Nazis uh, having put them in camps, and anywhere between 400,000 to 700,000 Serbs were tortured in these camps and killed in despicable ways, and their children and, and parents, and, and in fact, generations today um, have lost those parents. I remember that time. So unfortunately, Croatia, the independent Croatia during World War II, did in fact side with the Nazis, and they did put Jews and Serbs and Gypsies and others in these camps, especially in Bosnia. It was a really terrible time. Um, Having said that, it's also, uh, you know, the Serbs from the recent war in, in Croatia, uh, there have been the Operation Storm in Croatia, which really resulted in, in hundreds of thousands of Serbs being uh, basically driven from Croatia, and many of them, you know, have died, at least 20,000. So um, this is something that's not really as well known for many different reasons, one of which is that Serbs simply didn't, didn't have a PR campaign like the other ethnic groups. So I think on the one hand, to Serbian-Americans, they feel, oh, wow, you know, somebody, at least Bob Dylan, had actually recognized that there is the suffering that we, we felt. On the other hand, I can't quite say that, you, that, that Serbs in general feel that way toward Croatians because they live together within Yugoslavia. Many families have relatives that may be Croatian or Serbian of mixed marriage. So... Um, and I think I personally, for example, when I meet somebody who is Croatian, it doesn't occur to me. I don't connect them to, like, the way that maybe uh, Jews would feel toward Nazis. Um, and I don't even know if many Jews feel that way toward Germans. So, um, on the one hand, there is this still feeling of brotherhood and unity they had in Yugoslavia to get over what happened in the past. But uh, even with the 90s war, it's, it's kind of hard. Um, so, it's a mixed feeling. It's interesting you started talking about World War II because a lot of people would think this would have to do with the Balkans, but according to you, it goes even farther back. And if you go far enough back in history, there is a history of Croatians oppressing the Serbs. I just wanted to establish, have, hasn't the Hague found that the vast majority of killings of civilians in the Balkan Wars were done by Serbian or pro-Serbian forces? Is that correct? Well, the, the whole period of the 1990s and the so-called facts are really based on a lot of propaganda, and there really aren't any hard figures. Actually, the only hard hard figure is that as a result of the war in the 90s, in Bosnia and Croatia and Kosovo, the largest number of refugees are actually Serbian. Because what has happened is when Yugoslavia was, was basically disintegrated and this was recognized by the international community, Serbs were left in four different countries. I mean, Serbs were the one who was just totally split. And their traditional lands where they lived, whether in Bosnia or Croatia, Kosovo, you know, Serbia, they ended up being split, and it seemed like only Serbian rights to self-determination were not recognized. So um, the other groups, the Croatians and the Bosnian Muslims and so forth, they really fought hard to push their point of view in Washington and everywhere else. Serbia, unfortunately, had a, a fairly inadequate leader in Milosevic who, for many different reasons, didn't present the Serbian case, regardless of who, who his party was or what he stood for. Uh, Serbian people did have territorial rights in former Yugoslavia, and this case was not presented well. There was a lot of fighting, there was war crimes, on all sides, there really aren't any clear numbers right now. But um, I think the general 
opinion or something that's being pushed out there is that you'd feel like, yes, you're blaming the Serbs for that. So I think the Dillon statement finally recognized that, you know, actually uh, Serbs in Croatia were driven on that not only in the 1990s, but even in World War II. So um, it, it's, it's a very complex situation, and what the general opinion is in the media out there is not exactly reflected in the facts. Do you understand where the Croatians are coming from to a point? I spoke actually to um, the lawyer who is representing uh, the Council of Croats in France, and he said that uh, what Dylan's uh, statement basically did was attempt to uh, take uh, Croatians, as in all Croatians, and equate them with what he calls criminal organizations, which I, he's referring to the Ku Klux Klan and the Nazis. Do you, mm-hmm. as somebody, I mean, I'm Serbs have definitely faced a share of animus due to their ethnicity. Do you kind of understand where the Croatians are coming from in any shape yeah. or form? Yeah, yeah, I do, I do understand, and I think that's a valid point, because if you say Nazis, you're not saying Germans. And I think maybe, maybe Dylan, I can't speak for him, but maybe he made a bit of a mistake. He should have made a uh, distinction, maybe say Croatian Nazis in World War II, or something like that. Um, on, the, uh, on the other hand, when people talk about Serbs, they do tend to say the Serbs, and have said that for, you know, throughout the 1990s, and have... Um, certainly denigrated Serbs and, and, and put them all in the same bag. Um, and, of course, Serbian Americans never had the, the, the kind of financial uh, ability and strength to fight back this kind of anti-defamation, um, whereas the Croats obviously do. As soon as somebody says something, they're right on top of it. So I think Serbs have a lot to learn from that. But we unfortunately never had that kind of uh, organized activism and uh, um, to fight for any kind of anti-defamation against Serbian people. But no, I understand their point of view. You can't sort of say it against all Croatians. What Dylan was saying was at least for the first time uh, recognizing, though, that Serbs had died in World War II. And, and in comparison to their population, it's huge numbers, how, how, many, how many crimes were committed against them in Croatia, and, and Bosnia in particular by Croatia. So, um, um, and others, uh, you know, there were the Bosnian Muslim forces were also allied with the Nazis. So, uh, um I understand Dylan. I understand the Croatian community for also being upset about the way he said that. So, uh, you know, uh, let's hope we can resolve all this. What do you think would be, uh, just as a Serbian-American, what is uh, a way this could be resolved that could please everyone in the situation? Well, I, th- I think Bob Dylan could, could make, a, you know, a clarification maybe and say that what he was referring to was the suffering of Serbs and Jews in World War II the suffering, suffering of Serbs in Croatia during the Krajina attack, which there was a lot of suffering. A lot of these people's homes still haven't been reser- returned. There's still a lot of great deal of prejudice against Serbs in Croatia to this day. Um, you know, Serbian signs are being torn down. Uh, a lot of bigotry and biases against Serbian population in Croatia. Not Obviously, not all Croatians feel that way towards Serbs, but it's not exactly easy right now today to live in Croatia as a Serb. So, I, th- I think Dylan could maybe clarify that any kind of lack of tolerance to any ethnic group is unacceptable and that what he meant was maybe the uh, the extreme radical Croatian groups as opposed to all Croatians. I think he might might clarify that. All right, great. Uh, Daniel Sremats is an author, an expert on U.S. foreign policy in the Balkans, a multimedia consultant, and the president of the Serbian Institute. Uh, Daniel Sremats, thanks so much for joining us today on Voice of Russia and giving us a Serbian perspective. Thank you, my pleasure. And I am Justin Mitchell, and you are listening to the American edition of The Voice of Russia. And of The Voice of